welcome to another exciting podcast from Living Faith Church. It's our hope and prayer that today's message will bring you closer and deeper to the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now here is our lead pastor, Pastor Dean Hackett. Amen. Praise our God. You know, I, um, I don't imagine that Prince Charles and Prince Harry uh, have difficulty embracing their position of royalty. Do you? Can we go to the next slide? Prince Charles and Prince Harry. Um, there we go. Prince Charles uh, was, uh, and, and maybe still is, heir apparent to the throne of England when his mother, Queen Elizabeth, uh, goes into eternity. Prince Harry, one of his kiddos, has served in, in the military. He served in the, in the Middle East um, in the War on Terror. And uh, this picture here is of Prince Charles and Princess Di uh, in the city of Prague. In 1991, uh, I was there. Uh, we, had, we had gone uh, before the wall come down and had ministered there. We were, we were back again in 1990, again in 91. Uh, my daughter Roz was traveling with us, and I was showing her the clock of the apostles at the ancient uh, town square. This is the, the old town square. And um, uh, to our shock and surprise, here came Prince Charles and Princess Di. And so Roz went over, and this picture right here is Wanda, uh, not Wanda, but I'm sorry, Rosalind shaking Princess Di's hand. So I just thought I'd throw that in just for you to see that uh, we met royalty. But can I tell you, as wonderful as that is, um, I know an even greater king. And I meet with him personally every day. But you know, these, these folks don't struggle with their identity. Oh, there may be times when they feel like maybe they're not really worthy to, uh, to be who they are and to carry the title and to carry the role. But they don't struggle with their identity. They, 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 they don't feel condemnation. That, well, you know, you, and, and, and even though people may criticize them and say that they really have no, no business being royalty, uh, they know their lineage. They know their identity. They know who they are. Um, you and I have been called to be royalty. But the difference between us and these folks, from the earliest days that they were born, they had tutors that were teaching them their lineage, teaching them their rightful position and who they were, instructing them how to walk and how to talk like royalty. Uh, you don't speak as a commoner, you're royalty. Uh, you don't dress as a commoner, you're royalty. Uh, you, don't, you don't stand that way, you don't walk that way, you walk as, as royalty. And by the time they reached uh, elementary and secondary school level, they, they were prepared and ready to move on to be trained in the basics of what it meant to lead an empire, to rule, to, to carry the roles that they would carry as the Prince of Windsor and, and, uh, and the Duke that, uh, uh, that role that they carried. They, they began to learn military tactics and learning the basics of what it meant to be royalty and, and how to carry the authority of, of the royalty that indeed they were. Jesus Christ, we, we, uh, Pastor Darcy read it to us a few moments ago, that when we were born again, we were adopted into the family 
of the King of kings and Lord of lords. And to give you the assurance that indeed you were a member of that family and therefore an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ in the kingdom of Almighty God. He gave to us the Holy Spirit to live inside us to be the assurance, to be the affirmation, to be the seal of that covenant. You are now a covenant son and daughter of Almighty God. You are royalty. That's who you are. Uh, But I think many of us tend to live our life like Mia Thermopolis. Remember the movie Princess Diaries? Remember that? Here's Mia. She grew up as a normal teenage girl in high school in San Francisco. Struggling with her hair, with her makeup, with her face, with her other issues that teenage girls struggle with, right? And then one day, to her shock, Grandma came by her house in a huge limo. And Grandma announces, indeed, Mia Thermopolis, you are not the average teenage girl growing up in San Francisco. You are royalty. You are heir to the throne in Genovia. And Mia wasn't sure she wanted to be royalty. And then she had to go through all the training. If you've never seen the movie, just watching her go through the training is is a crack up. And she has to learn how to walk as royalty, talk as royalty, how to have the manners of royalty, how to, how, how to have the, the graces and, and the skills of royalty. And then, of all things, when, when she was crowned as queen of Genovia, then she had to begin learning how to exercise the authority of royalty. All the training, and of course, that goes into Princess Diaries number two. I'm very thankful that they have not done like Rocky. They don't have Princess Diaries number 54. Yeah. <laughs> it starts getting a little tough when Rocky has to come out into the ring with crutches. <clears throat> okay, that was a rabbit trail. Apologize. Colossians, sorry, I'm not sure where that came from. Sorry, Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. And I want to urge you to turn there with me, would you please? Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 13. This is such a powerful scripture. And if you have, have never learned this, I, I hope that you will memorize this portion of scripture. Because you need to rehearse the scripture in your heart and mind on a regular basis. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Say that with me. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Say it again. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And translated us, one translation says, communicated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Or one translation says, the son whom he loves. When we are born again, Almighty God takes us out of the kingdom of darkness And brings us into the kingdom of his dear son. And adopts us into the family. And gives to us the Holy Spirit. That is the seal. That is the earnest. That is the guarantee. Of our identity and our position in Jesus Christ. As royalty. As heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. As prince and princesses to the king of glory. And every time you experience the moving of the Holy Spirit, every time you get a Holy Spirit hunch, every time you experience God's touch in your life, it is an assurance you are royalty. Amen. 
Do you truly know your identity? Do you in your heart live every day with the assurance that you are royalty? Do you know how to walk and talk as royalty of the kingdom of God? Are you comfortable with your identity and with the authority that God gives to you as an heir of the kingdom of Almighty God and as an ambassador of His kingdom, as a duke, as a duchess of His kingdom? Are you comfortable with that authority and do you know how to use that authority for the kingdom of Almighty God? I dare say most of us are like Mia Thermopolis on the left over here, your left. Okay? I, there may be a few of you that, that are ready to walk here. But I think most of God's kids are right here and you're going, really? Shut up! If you haven't seen the movie, you don't get that. <laughs> He's going, I am really uncomfortable with what you're saying right now, Pastor. That I'm a duke, that I'm a duchess of the kingdom of Almighty God. Absolutely you are. The Lord Jesus Christ himself has said that you are seated with him. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says, He has raised us up and made us sit together with Him in heavenly places. We are seated with Jesus Christ right now. I know you're sitting in a chair in the worship center at Living Faith Building, but I want to tell you something. That's where you are in the natural. But in the spiritual realm, if you have been born again, you may be living like Mia here, but I'm telling you, you really are this over here. And as uncomfortable as that may be to you, that is your true identity. And Almighty God wants you to learn how to live and move and have your being as the royalty that indeed you are. And that's what this series is all about. That's where we're going, okay? But we got to understand that if we're going to live like this we got to be trained. So everybody stand for me just a moment, will you please? This isn't charismatic calisthenics. I, I have a purpose here for you standing. Okay. 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 As you're standing there, okay, uh, let's change from this to, come on, you're royalty. Come on, stand up. Come on, head up. Head up high. Pastor Reagan, Carl, some of you others, Big Dave, some of you, 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 you were like me. You, you remember the days when, when you arrived at Basic and you were a rainbow? Had to march around singing rainbow, rainbow, don't be blue. You know? <laughs> then you got your uniform. But it was attention. Hut! And you stood at attention, head up, stomach in, chest out. Come on! We were Air Force, some were Marines, some were Army, some were Navy, but it was all basically the same thing. You are going to learn, and I, I will never forget, Sergeant Knowles, about five, six, five, seven. If you bumped up against his pant legs, they cut you. They were so sharp and pressed. He wore one of those flat build caps. If he threw it at you, he'd cut your head off if he hit you in the neck. 
He's standing there in front of us. We just got off the blue goose, the bus from the, from the, from the, uh, from the airport. We're all standing there. We, we've been up all night long because we got held up in Dallas. We're there standing all night long. And he's walking back and forth in front of us. His heels clicking on the, on the concrete, the asphalt. And he's walking back and forth. And he's saying this, you are mine. I now own you 24 hours a day. And you are going to learn. Right? We were in training. We had to move from being commoner to learn how to be a disciplined, well-trained military that could go and face the enemy and face combat in a way that we would not be as a commoner, but we could face the most difficult challenges, that we learn how to take orders, that we learn how to... You didn't question the order, you followed it. Had to be trained, had to learn. And I'm looking around the room here, and every one of you, you are a duchess, you are a duke, and God wants to train you how to live as royalty in his kingdom. But it is time to get your head up, your chest out, and come on, you're royalty. You're royalty. You are royalty. You are filled with the spirit of the living God. You are royalty. Come on, give him praise. You may be seated. But if we're going to live like royalty, we've got to be trained. Amen? Amen. We're going to go through some basic training. And I'm going to tell you, one of the first things you've got to do is you've got to become as a little child. Jesus said, except you become as a little child, you will in no wise enter the kingdom. I will never forget. I will never forget that first week at basic training. Guys were there from the University of Georgia. They were from all over the nation. And I'm telling you, these guys were like little wimps. Because none of us knew what to expect. We had no clue what was coming next. And, and none of us were comfortable in that situation. We were in an old World War II barrack, so it was an open bay and I forget how many guys were, were in that room, but there was a bunch of us. And, and it was, he, there was nothing like home. There was nothing that was comfortable. And we were all like little kids having to learn all over again how to behave like a man. And when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, whether we're 10, whether we're 30, whether we're 60 or 75, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are like a little child. And God wants you to humble yourself to Him and under His mighty hand and say, God, I don't know anything. Teach me and train me. I want to learn how to walk and how to talk and how to behave like your son and daughter. So I'm living like royalty in the kingdom of Almighty God. Yes, yes. That's why Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And the word there for poor, there are three Greek words the Lord Jesus Christ could have chosen to use there. He used the Greek word patokos. And it means an, the total adject poverty. It's not just somebody that hasn't got enough. They don't have anything, but further, they have no means to change their condition. They are in absolute poverty. They don't have anything. And they do not have the physical ability, the mental ability, 
the any means, any way by which they can lift themselves out of that poverty, they are completely dependent upon somebody else lifting them up out of their poverty so they have a way to live. That is what he is saying. Blessed are those who recognize I am totally spiritually bankrupt. And I can't do anything about my spiritual condition. I can't get good enough. I can't do anything. But Almighty God says, by my mercy and grace, I will lift you up out of that spiritual poverty and I will make you sit with me with my son in my kingdom and I will adopt you into my family and I will give you the Holy Spirit and I, by my mighty power, will give you everything you need for life and godliness. Is that amazing? But you know what we tend to do? So God lifts us up out of there and he saves us. And we go, okay, I got this now, God. Thank you. I got it. Really? And just tell me how you're going to get it. I had one person tell me one time and said, you know what? I, I, I would be a Christian, but there's no way I can live the Christian life. I said, join the rest of humanity. None of us can. I can't live this life except for the power of the Holy Spirit in me and God's grace every day in my life. I've often wondered if I frustrate God because every day the scripture says that his mercies are new every morning. And when I get done at night and I lay down and I go to sleep at night, That well of mercy he gave me that day is completely drained. There's nothing left for tomorrow. And it's grace. I use it up every day. I use it up completely every day. And I'm not the only one in the room. Every morning we wake up and we pray, God, thank you. I have not... Got angry today. I've not cursed today. I've not been mean today. I've not been selfish today. I've not touched anybody today. I have not lost my temper anybody today. But I'm about to get out of bed. <laughs> Lay here. I woke up perfect. I've not messed anything up. But I'm just about... To get dressed. And now it all changes. Come on, right? See, we are, we are totally bankrupt. We are totally, completely, and utterly dependent upon Almighty God. We can't do this. So when we foolishly make our little lists... Okay, I'm a normal Christian because I don't do this, 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 don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. We make our lists and nobody can live up to it. Because Almighty God isn't saying what you don't do, He's telling you what you are. And it all happens by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you have love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, self control. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you do exploits in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you have wisdom, you have faith, you have knowledge, but you have miracles, you have healing. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you're always an overcomer. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you always have the resources you need. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we are totally complete. Completely and utterly dependent upon our Heavenly Father. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And then, you know what he says to you and I? He says, I know that you're completely, you're completely bankrupt. You're totally, completely dependent upon me. But when you are born again, I make you sit with Jesus in heavenly places. Catch this. And then I bless you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And whatever you need for life and godliness, I give it to you. Because you're royalty. Really? Come on! So I got a question for you. What are you doing down there 
all discouraged and depressed and I'm under such a burden. Get out from under there. But life has done this to me. Sure, life's not fair. Life always throws you a curve. I want to tell you something. When life throws its worst at you, God's just starting. He's just starting. Wow. Thank you, Lord. February 1990, I did one of the most difficult things I've ever done in my life. I put my second born daughter on an airplane with just enough clothes for maybe a handful of days and her keyboard that she never went anywhere without and sent her to what had been the front lines of the Croat Serbian War. And then the War of Kosovo broke out. And she was living within 20 miles of the bombing. And I was completely out of control. I couldn't do anything about it. This was before emails. This was before Skype. This was before any of those wonderful things we have now. And it was a 21 to 26 day turnaround with a letter. So we had no idea what was going on. And we went weeks without knowing. And I was completely out of control. But one of the things Father continually was saying to me, but she's mine. But she's mine. But she's mine. I knew she was right where God had called her, and she's mine. And she's mine. And I want you to understand, when it's out of control, when you feel out of control, and as human beings, we are control freaks. Come on. When you feel completely out of control, the king is in control. And what he wants to teach you how to do is how to live completely under his discipline and control. Now, here's another thing you need to know, though. Not everyone enters the kingdom of God. Jesus made a very powerful statement right here in Matthew 7, 21, when he said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, but he who does the will of my Father. For in that day many will say, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. And I will say to them, I never knew you, you lawless one. That's a scary statement right there. Because what he is saying is, if we're going to live in the kingdom, if we're going to live as royalty, not only do we need to humble ourselves to him as a child and recognize we're totally and completely dependent upon our heavenly father, but we must do the will of father. We must live in obedience to him. That means you give up the right for having the final say. And please understand, in heaven there is no redress. I used to hear people say, well, God said it and I believe it. That settles it. I'd always kind of go, it didn't matter whether you believe it or not. It's settled. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in the heavens. Already done. Come on. What that was saying is, God said it, I'm arguing with it, and I may believe it. See, now, now you got to stop. you got to stop. But it, sometimes it doesn't make sense. That's exactly right. There are times God's holy word doesn't make sense. But I'll tell you what I have found. If I will stick around long enough and quit fighting and quit wrestling and quit arguing with God about it, 
I will then learn enough to see, oh, that's where that fits in the whole scheme of things. And I've been wrestling with God about it. I've been arguing with God about it. I got to stop. I got to stop. Now, I'm sure there's no one else in this room like this except me. But I want to tell you there have been many times when my obedience started with a very firm set of skid marks. Oh, some of you do that too. How's that working for you? Kind of like it works for me? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't work very well, does it? All it does is wear out your shoes. Okay, God, God wants us to learn how to walk with him in obedience, in complete, humble obedience. But like all children, okay, like all children, I do not know why thirdborns are so stubborn. But they tend to be. But then I noticed something else. Firstborns are stubborn. Now we secondborns, we're very compliant. <laughs> Not. <laughs> right. Okay. We, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of learning as a child to accept the discipline. Whom the father loves, he disciplines. That, he, that we might become children who truly know how to live and walk and have our being as royalty. Because indeed we are royalty. So that we can learn how to use the authority that Almighty God has given to us. The kingdom of God is entered through repentance and new birth. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive this promise. The kingdom of God is entered through repentance and through new birth. Listen to me, children. There's a reason the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, wrote to the church at Ephesus, wrote to the church at Galatia, And he said that no fornicator, nor immoral person, nor liar, nor rebellious one will enter the kingdom of God. I'm greatly concerned today that inside the church in America, there are so many who are claiming to be sons and daughters of the living God. But they're hooking up on Friday night and Saturday night and then coming and lifting their hands and worshiping Jesus and telling Jesus how much he loves them when they are living in fornication. And the scripture makes it very, very clear. You cannot do that and go to heaven. You cannot do that and live like royalty. That is living like the world. And the scripture says to us, we are royalty. If we're going to live as royalty, we have to stop living like the world. You can't have both. If you're going to have sex before you get married, just understand, enjoy your physical pleasure here. Because eternity is going to be very uncomfortable. And no one's going to turn the temperature down for you. Because you're not going to the kingdom of God. Not here and not there. And if you're monkeying around in your mind and in your emotions... And you're playing in your mind and in your emotions with someone who is not your wife, who is not your husband. I'm saying to you right now, Jesus said by playing with it in your mind and in your emotions, you are committing adultery. And the scripture says no one who commits adultery is in the kingdom of God and is going to go to heaven. So you may not be touching 
But in your mind and in your emotions, you are committing adultery. And God says in his word, that is the same thing as doing it physically. And you will not make heaven. I'm saying this to you not because I'm angry or I'm upset with you. It is because I want you to understand as a born again child of God, you are called and and you have been made royalty. And God wants you to step up out of the world and start living like royalty. Renounce your immorality. Renounce your fornication. Renounce your adultery. Renounce your lying. Renounce all of that stuff and turn to the King of Kings. Let him wash you. Let him cleanse you. Let him make you royalty and live like royalty. God's called you to be royalty. There's such a higher way to live. There's such a higher way to live. And I want to tell you, there is nothing that fills your heart with joy like when you walk through a temptation and on the other side you didn't give in and you realized that was the thing that had been constantly tripping you up and you went through victorious and go, yes. yes. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. But, but did, hey, listen, but, but don't get lifted up. You didn't do it. Yeah. Holy Spirit in you yes. helped you do that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, amen. amen. Come on. Yeah. Come on, sir. Give up that pornography. Come on, give it up. Come on, sis, let that fantasy go. Live with a renewed mind. Live in the power of a renewed mind. Mm. Is this making sense? Called to be royalty. Go to the next slide for me, will you please? This is where we were going to go kingdom operates on a different world view but I think I've kept you long enough I'm supposed to pray for you so we're going to come back here next week Jesus said a very interesting thing to his disciples they'd been in the Galilee the Pharisees and Sadducees had been doing what they tended to do asking Jesus for a sign and Jesus goes there's no sign going to be given to this wicked generation <clears throat> and he gets with his disciples to the other side of the Galilee. And, and Jesus says to them, I, I want you to be alert and be aware. And don't let the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and of Herod in your life. We are so blessed that you join us online today. For more resources on how you can grow your relationship with Jesus Christ, visit us online at www.winacity.com. If you would like to speak with someone about your relationship with Jesus Christ or would like prayer, you can contact us at 541-567-4486 or email us at info at